Hey everybody, Bill in Virginia. Welcome back. So this week I am going to be doing a few things on the layout. Uh, one of the things I'm going to get started on is painting the uh, track and ties, both for the ON30 and then uh, O standard gauge down here. Uh, I do have to come in and get a few ties, uh, sand them down a little bit, and fill in uh, one, two, I think three or four little gap areas. Uh, not very many ties at all on this section, but then I can paint the rails using that hammered iron, and then uh, these ties I'd actually painted uh, quite a while ago, but I'll just kind of touch them up on here. So I'm going to do that. Another thing that I'm going to try to do is I'm still... Still needing to get my fascia. Uh, I will try again this week and head out to uh, Home Depot to see if I can get a 4x8 sheet of the 1 8 inch hardboard and uh, get it ripped in half lengthwise. Uh, another thing that I'm going to be doing and showing a few clips on, I'm building trees. So I've got a pile here that are ready for the next steps, which is the... Uh, Kind of smothering them, well not smothering them, but coating them in uh, wood glue. And then I'm going to use this as my uh, rolling area. Now put some of the ground or ground cover on it, roll the trunks into it, and then let them dry. And then I'll end up with uh, trunks like this. These were left over from uh, last batch of trees that I did on the other one. I also got a whole bunch of smaller trees, so I'll be making a lot of trees here soon. Still have to go and get additional materials from uh, Hobby Lobby and uh, make more, and then make some more, and make more. So <laughs> a lot of those going on. So a number of projects. So uh, let's get to it and uh, see what I'm going to do first here. So I've spent a few minutes uh, adding three ties total to the narrow gauge line. Uh, just one here, and then you know there was one over there, and then one on the other side. So that track is ready to paint. And the O scale down here is ready to paint. Uh, one thing that I might do, and well, I will do it at some point uh, while I'm working on it this week, is I'll take the modules apart, uh, pull this paper out, and then add stain to uh, finish this area off on this side. I will try to get the uh, fascia on the other side, actually, before I do the, uh, the break part of the modules, because that way that'll be done over there, and then uh, I can finish up that area, too. So a lot of little things going on this week with... Uh, what I'm doing on this part of the layout. So uh, let's see, I'll move on to the next piece here and uh, let's see what I can do. So I have opted to uh, start over here before I do uh, track painting. I figured I wanna get this area, well, not done, but more along. And I've got the uh, baking parchment sheets here. I want to get the uh, sculpt mold put into place and I can bring it up here on this part of the uh, new fascia that I just installed. Once I get this in and it sets a little bit and it form fits with what I've got over here, then I can take the modules apart and then I can pull the parchment on this side and on the other side. And I do have to do just a little bit in here on the uh, straight O track. Where it, and boy, it's dark. There, get over. Where it crosses the cut, I've noticed that during the uh, very humid months of the summer, even though the garage stays fairly comfortable, I get a little bit of expansion, which causes a couple of problems, and occasionally I'll have a car derail because the, the tracks don't align well. So when I have the uh, modules apart, I'm going to come in and on the inside tracks, at the, uh, the seam, I will bevel them just a little bit so that I can kind of take away some nick points where the tires, you know, where the wheels on the, the cars tend to pop. The engines run fine because they've got weight. They'll ride over it really well. But I have noted that some of the lighter cars will kind of 
bounce a little bit too much on those and uh, come off the tracks. I haven't had anything hit the floor. It just, I can hear when the wheels pop off and, you know, I'll stop it. But I think beveling it a little bit on the inside so that I get a little bit smoother transition when I do get a little bit of expansion come into play here will make it so that uh, I won't have any derailments. But to do that, I gotta take the modules apart so that I can get access to it. Uh, but that will be, that will be okay. So anyway, I'm gonna get the scope to mold going here yet this evening and uh, we'll continue on our way here. A little later Monday evening, and I have the sculpt mold on now in this area here. I will let it set for a while. And maybe, maybe a tonight I'll make up a small batch of plaster. Uh, and then uh, just do some carving on this a little bit. Don't need much. I'm going to have uh, like some vegetation, trees, and some other things right here at the end of the tracks just kind of coming up this way just sort of hide that seam again and blend it in a little bit more. Uh, you know, the sculpt mold is pressed in tight. Uh, it should be a, a good tight seam once I pull it apart for the most part. Then I'll do some carving and some uh, painting and put in some vegetation along in here and a few other things to just blend that in. But that looks uh, pretty good. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That should work out well. Now what I need, and I've been saying that in a number of videos, I need to get the uh, rest of my fascia. Anyhow, that'll come a little later at some point. But uh, see what else I can get done on this yet. So it was still Monday evening. I did not wait very long, and I made up a small batch of plaster and put it on uh, over the uh, still damp sculpt mold. It actually works better when the sculpt mold is still damp because when the sculpt mold dries and you put wet plaster on it, it sucks the moisture out of the plaster and it sets faster. And I've had experience where it actually turns crumbly. Uh, so I got it on before then. I'm going to let this sit for a little bit, come back in with the wire brush, knock off the nublies. Then tomorrow night, I can take the module apart. And after I do that, you know, I'll get rid of the... Uh, parchment uh, cooking paper, see how things look. I can take, uh, you know, the putty knife, I can take a screwdriver, I can take the wire brush, whatever I need to sort of blend it in a little bit uh, where that seam is. I'm not going to go too crazy. You know, I want to make it where it's at least visible, but also the sides have to match up. You know, I've got this dark, you can see where I kind of dug in to here. I'll carve maybe a little bit more once I get this seam this paper out of the way to make sure that everything aligns well in there and actually it looks like it's going to do pretty good so yep we'll just let it get nice and hard and then go on to the next step but tomorrow night I'll take the module apart and uh, start doing some more so uh, probably the next segment's going to be Tuesday evening here as always one more before I call it a day um, came back with the wire brush nubblies are removed uh, that's going to look pretty good, I think. That's going to blend in well. And when I uh, you know, get some like a nice big pine tree right in here, that'll hide that seam, whatever I can't take care of uh, just by doing some carving. That looks uh, good to my eye. I uh, won't stain it for a while. I'll wait until I get everything else done. Then I'll come back in and stain all of it at one time. But uh, yeah, it looks, it looks okay. I like how that's turning out. So, more to come. Well, it's still Monday night. <laughs> oh, I came back out after uh, having supper and took the uh, module apart. So I haven't had this one off, actually in many months. Uh, so it came apart really well. You can see the parchment paper and how everything sort of form fits to the uh, rocks. So I will take the uh, parchment off and, uh, you know, I will do what I was saying with the track. And here you can kind of see what I'm going to do a little bit better. I'm just going to take a diamond file and on the inside, I'm just going to bevel it ever so slightly just to kind of get rid of the point so that it's not nicking it as it goes through. 
Same on these over here, and then likewise on these over here. And I'll kind of clean up some of the debris that's on some of this. Uh, I will do a little bit of scenery work, like right in here, I'll add some more polyfiber and some more ground cover. Just to kind of get this done, I'll start doing some uh, buildup of polyfiber on this side too, so that when I put the uh, pieces together, you know, I've got my seams sort of camouflaged. And, well, that's interesting. We'll take that little chunk off right there. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. But it also gives you a good view. There's my uh, connector wires. Same number on the other side. So, you know, I've got the uh, unmarked ones go in with uh, unmarked, the taped ones go in with tape, and then uh, these three for the switch. They all go in through the uh, side of my little box right here, and then I'll connect them up. This one has no tape on it. It gets the ones that have no tape over there. This one's got tape, so it gets those wires, and the switch. So I know exactly where I need to wire things up. But I will uh, pull the parchment paper off, and then tomorrow we'll look at doing a little bit more with this here. It is getting late, so I'm not going to do a whole lot more this evening, but get a good idea on the construction. So Tuesday night after work, and I've been out here for just a few minutes, and I've taken my diamond file, and you can kind of see just a slight bevel. Uh, you know, I've just kind of gone back and forth a little bit. Not much, but just kind of give a bevel on the inside of each rail. And I did that on uh, both sides already. So I've done over here as well. I'll know if I get uh, better pass through on the seam once I get the uh, layout put back together here again after bed. You know, I have not had any issues with the uh, ON30 track. Uh, there's been no uh, gap or anything increasing with that, so I've been kind of happy. You know, I might, yeah, I might just give it just a slight like that, and that really isn't even going to take off anything, so just to kind of reduce any spurs. Anyhow, I don't think I need to do it on that one. Those are pretty good. So, I will uh, continue to do a little bit more. I think this evening, as I get out of my spot here, I'm going to dig out some uh, polyfiber and I will start to fill this in and start doing a little bit of scenery work. I can also, at some point here, get out the uh, stains and I can stain this area and this area and I'll just kind of do some on the ends here as well, just kind of hide it. But uh, we'll see what I can get into tonight. I still also have to uh, paint this track up here as well as do some ballast work up to about the middle of the switch coming this way. I'm not going to do too much beyond it. Uh, maybe just add a little bit of ballast and that'll be it. Not even paint that far piece because I can't see it. So let's see what else I can get done on this video here. Well, one more short segment on this video and then it's long enough, I think. So uh, I've got my scenic materials out and just sitting. So what I'm going to do to wrap this video up is I'm going to come back in here and I'll get the ground cover finished in this little area. You can see I've already glued um, some polyfiber down. Now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to spray it with, uh, uh, what is it, isopropyl alcohol. Then I'm going to come back over with 50-50 dilute glue just to get everything good and wet and then start putting some scenic materials in. So the next shot should show this scene, at least this little area anyway, pretty much done. Then I'll let it sit for a little while and then I can put the uh, layout back together again and then I can stain and uh, run some trains on the O scale. That'll be on the next one. So let's just finish this one off here. So it doesn't look quite as organized as it did uh, five minutes ago as I've used up bits and pieces over here. But let's see. So here's the seam now on this module. I've got the ground cover in and as done as I'm going to do right now, probably not do anything more with it. I will just let the glue set um, 
probably actually most of the evening, and then I'll put it back together. I don't want any of the glue to still be really wet or damp in here. You can still see a little blobs that'll eventually dry because I don't want it to stick to uh, its matching surface over here uh, and cause problems later on. So I had planned on putting the layout together tonight. I think I will wait on that and probably probably actually get started doing some more uh, along the seam here between the backdrop and the ground. Because so I'll spray that down with the isopropyl, add dilute white glue, and just kind of give it some texture uh, so that I'll be ready to plant trees when uh, I get the trees going. But this I don't have to worry about, and then I can just let the glue set on that overnight, let the glue sit on this overnight, and then bring the layout back together again tomorrow. And that's where I will pick up on uh, the next episode. So with that, keep having fun on your layouts. Until next time.